Daniel chapter number 9. We'll begin reading in verse number 20. The Bible said, And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved, Therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the Prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood unto the end of the war desolations are determined and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even unto the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We do thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the privilege of being in your house tonight. Thank you, Lord, for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you, Lord, that uh, uh, you're in control and that, God, nothing ever catches you by surprise. Uh, Father, thank you that, Lord, before it can come to us, it has to come through your hand. Uh, And, Lord, thank you that you'll not put more on us than we're able to bear. Thank you for the blood that was shed to be the propitiation for our sins. Thank you, Lord, that we who are saved uh, have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, robed in his righteousness, sealed unto the day of redemption. Uh, Now, Father, help us. Bless the reading of the word of God. Uh, Help our minds and our hearts to be ready to receive what thus saith the Lord. Uh, Lord, I pray that, Lord, you transform us uh, even this night uh, into thy likeness. May we leave forth from this place, uh, Lord, different than we came in. May others take note that we have been with Jesus. Uh, Lord, uh, help us, Lord, uh, uh, to set in heavenly places in Christ Jesus uh, and help us. You know what we stand in need of. Uh, Father, you know every heart. Uh, You know those that have labored hard this week. You know those that are tired in body. You know those that are grieving in their spirit. Uh, You know those that are struggling. Uh, There may even be some in our midst that are unsaved. Uh, Father, I pray the Holy Ghost would not be grieved, but allowed to speak to hearts. Uh, Help folks to have discerning spirits to mind the Lord. Uh, And God, save that one nearest hell. Uh, Father, help us tonight. Use this unworthy vessel, we pray. In Jesus' name, uh, amen, uh, amen. The book of Daniel really is divided into two sections. Uh, uh, The first part of Daniel, uh, you find that God does some miraculous things uh, through this servant. Uh, Can I say that Israel has been carried off into captivity? 
And in the first part of this uh, wonderful book, we find that uh, when Daniel uh, and those that come to become to know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, and others, uh, when they are presented uh, uh, to live uh, in uh, eat after the riotous lifestyle, the king they uh, uh, pleaded that they would uh, uh, just eat a pulse and that they would not defile themselves with the things of the king and the wine of the king. Uh, and it was granted unto them, and uh, uh, God blessed them, blessed their countenance, blessed their health, uh, uh, just eating peas, basically. Uh, and uh, that was one miracle in the book of Daniel. Uh, of course, we know that in the book of Daniel that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are thrown into the fiery furnace uh, that was heated up seven times hotter than it had ever been heated up. Uh, and Nebuchadnezzar looked in and saw the fourth man, uh, saw the Son of God in there, uh, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that did not have any hurt. They came out, uh, and a decree was made that they would serve the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, we also know that uh, uh, the Babylonians are overthrown by the Medes and the Persians, uh, and Daniel's carried off again uh, in captivity. Uh, we find that uh, uh, Daniel uh, is blessed to be be able uh, through the Spirit of God to interpret uh, uh, visions and interpret dreams uh, and to give uh, 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 counsel to uh, those that whether it be kings or those in charge and he's elevated in the kingdoms uh, and uh, you know he's hoodwinked in about Daniel chapter 6 uh, 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 we find he's hoodwinked and they uh, 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 lie to the king and they make a, 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 a way to catch Daniel because they know uh, he had an excellent spirit. There was no fault found in him. Uh, 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 and the only fault they could find in Daniel was concerning his God. Uh, and Daniel prayed three times a day. They had the king make a decree. No one could ask anything uh, in any other name other than the king's name. Uh, and Daniel, knowing what would happen, uh, still raised his windows, still prayed toward uh, uh, Jerusalem three times a day, morning, noon, and night. Uh, and Daniel was thrown into lion's den. We know that. We know that God sent uh, an angel and shut the lion's mouth. Uh, we know that uh, he was delivered. And again, uh, uh, Daniel is elevated. And again, uh, God is praised through the life of Daniel. All that happens in the first part of the book of Daniel. The last half of the book of Daniel deals with Daniel getting visions and dreams and prophecies from the Lord. And can I say, they're concerning the nation of Israel. And a lot of people, uh, uh, you get to the second half, and uh, it can get pretty hairy if you're not a scholar of eschatology. And uh, uh, we find all that in the book of Daniel. Daniel's an interesting book. It's a book that is uh, one to be uh, uh, carefully studied, just like the book of Revelation. As a matter of fact, Daniel and Revelation, you've got to get a good handle on both of them to come to some understanding uh, of the end times. Uh, can I say this, and I, I'm just going to say this as uh, compassionately as I, I, I know how, I have an understanding of the end times, but it's not something I dwell in. I know guys that they, they camp there, and then uh, they'll make some predictions, and then the predictions don't come to pass, so they have to back up, and they camp there some more. Can I say this, that the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sanhedrin council were given to the law every day of their life. And when it came to the prophecies in the scriptures, they only saw the mountaintop of prophecies. They only saw the prophecies concerning the Messiah coming and delivering Israel, uh, and Israel would no longer be subject uh, uh, to other nations. They did not see the prophecies concerning Jesus coming as the Savior. They did not see him, uh, even though Isaiah makes it very clear uh, that he'd be born of a virgin. Uh, uh, we find that uh, 
Uh, Micah made it very clear he'd be born in Bethlehem, Ephrathah. We find that it's very clear he'd be sold for 30 pieces of silver. We find that it's very clear that the Lord would lay on him the iniquity of us all in Isaiah 53. Uh, we find that he would, uh, 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 in Isaiah 52, his beard would be plucked. Uh, uh, we find that he would be uh, marred much more than any man. They did not see that the Savior would come uh, and bleed and die for their sins. And when Jesus showed up, they didn't recognize him. And I say all that, say this, you've got to be very careful being a proclaimed prophet that you know how this thing's going to wind up. Hmm? Again, I've got a good understanding of it, but uh, I'm not going to stay, stand here and tell you I know everything's going to happen. Because he's the Lord. He's infinite. I have a finite mind, and I am limited and the only thing I know is just things I've kind of looked at and things that he's given me, but I do not understand at all. We, are, we all on the same page right there? Amen. Let me help you. Neither do you. Uh, neither is anybody else walking around. God's going to do what he's going to do in his timing. There are some things I, I do have a good understanding about. I believe the church is going to be raptured out before tribulation, and there's a lot of good things in the Bible that I understand. Well, let's look at this chapter, and I want you to understand a few things, and we'll go to the house. I want you to notice, first of all, Daniel's prayer. Matter of fact, most of the first 20 verses is dealing with Daniel talking to God. We find in verse number 20, it says, And while I was speaking and, and, and praying and confessing my sin and the sin to, of the people of Israel, presenting my supplication before the Lord my God and for the holy mountain of my God. When he's talking about the holy mountain, he's talking about Jerusalem. And he's praying for Jerusalem because Jerusalem's in ruins. And he's praying for God's people to be restored and put back at Jerusalem. But look uh, with me in verse number 3. The Bible says, And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes, and I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him uh, and to them that keep his commandments, uh, we have sinned uh, and committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts uh, and from thy judgments. Uh, neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, uh, which spake in thy name to our kings, uh, our princes, uh, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. And he goes on to talk to God uh, about the state of the nation of Israel and seeking God on some things concerning the nation. Now, can I say this? If you study this prayer, this is a model prayer. This is almost a perfect prayer. Can I say that this prayer has every single thing in prayer that you could ever have that will get God's attention? Can I say that his prayer includes every phase uh, required to appease God, and can, and including confession of sin? He confesses his own sins, in verse 20. He confesses the sins of his fathers, and he confesses the sins of the nation. What a blessing. It would be a blessing if God's people would start confessing their sin to God again. It would be a blessing if instead of complaining about America, somebody would start and pleading to God, confessing America's sin, confessing our fathers' sin, our fathers of faith who didn't preach against sin. And uh, so we see confession is in this. There's also supplication, which is a humble and earnest plea or entreating to God. He's not praying to impress God. He is broken before God and pleading his heart to God. We also find in this prayer is praise. He exalts God for who God is. In this prayer, we find intercession. He's praying for the people of Israel. And he also does it with fasting. I mean, every phase of prayer that is taught to us in the New Testament, he's doing. We see his prayer. Can I say this? His prayer came as a result of something. He didn't just sit down one day and say, well, I'm going to pray and do all this stuff. 
Look with me, if you will, in verse number 2. It said, In the first year of his reign, talking about Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, he said, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. He is reading the scriptures. And when he's reading the scriptures and seeking the Lord in the scriptures, God breaks his heart to pray. Can I say when we get in the Bible and we start seeing who God is in the God of the Bible and we start seeing who we are in relationship to God, we too will pray and confess sin. It's a, it's a tall tale uh, indictment against most churches that folks come in expecting something from God and it's only because they haven't been in his book and realize we don't deserve anything from God. He prayed because he'd been in the Bible. Notice he's studying Jeremiah. You see, they did not have the privilege we have. They didn't have the Bible. No doubt that Daniel didn't hear Jeremiah preach to the king. Daniel did not hear all the judgments that were coming because of their sin. But now he's reading the, the scriptures of Jeremiah and he realizes why they are in captivity. He realizes how many warnings uh, that uh, uh, the kings before them had and they ignored the warnings. They did not repent and as a result he is repenting because they did not listen. He studied the scriptures and we see the prayer of Daniel. Notice, if you will, the parson dispatched with the answer. Look at verse 21. Yea, whilst, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, you all know who Gabriel is, don't you? He's an archangel. There's only a few of them. And he is dispatched. This is as high as it gets. This is the Lord sending a general to go talk to one of his servants. It says, And while I was, I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation or prayer. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. Uh, at the beginning of thy supplications, uh, the commandment came forth, uh, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Uh, therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. We find he's praying. No, no telling how long he's been praying, how long he's been fasting. But he's doing business with God, morning, noon, and night. And all of a sudden, in the midst of his prayer, an archangel shows up. He's been dispatched to give Daniel the answer to his prayer. Let Daniel know he's beloved. He is favored. God takes note of Daniel. Now let me just stop right here a couple things. Number one, it ought to be desire every one of us to, to be beloved of God. Amen. To please God so much that our prayer life is so in tune with God, we get answers directly from God. That ought to be our desire. Hmm? Amen. Unfortunately, most people are more interested in talking on Facebook than they are to God. They're more interested in talking on the phone than they are to God. They're more interested in doing all kinds of things than talking to God. Therefore, we don't have the same results. Now, let me also say this. God no longer speaks through visions and dreams. Please make a note of that. And, and being in the ministry now 37 years, I couldn't tell you the times people have come to me and said, Preacher, I had a dream last night that blah, 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 blah. Well, quit eating so late before you go to bed, and you'll quit having them dreams. God don't speak to us through dreams anymore. Amen. I don't care how real it seems. God speaks to us through His Word. Yes. God no longer dispatches angels to speak to us. The Holy Spirit that indwells us speaks to us through the Word and through our spirit. 
Why would I want an angel when I got God Himself through the person of the Holy Spirit? I've made people mad in years gone by. Not deliberately, I don't think. Uh, I've had people talk about angels all the time. Billy Graham wrote a book on angels and all this. Why is everybody all caught up in angels? Do you realize that when this thing's over, we'll be elevated above angels? Huh? And by the way, they're not all little cute cherubs and all that. I mean, some of them, some of them boogers, I mean, they wiped out whole armies in a night. These are tough birds, all right? But can I say, God has given His angels charge over us. In other words, He does have guardian angels watching over us. I thank the Lord for that. But I don't pray to the guardian angel. I'm not seeking the guardian angel. I'm not interested in the guardian angel. He's doing what God told him. I'm interested in doing what God tells me to do. Hmm? It's very interesting. I preached on angels one time, and I often said I was going to write a book on what's the big deal with angels. But a lot of people get upset over that because, you know, they love them little angels and their little knick-knack thing and all that. And I'd rather have the Holy Ghost right. speak to me. So anyway, that didn't cost you anything. Don't get hung up on dreams and visions. I've had, I've had even preachers say, well, I had to put a fleece out. God don't speak through fleeces. Huh? God speaks through His Word and through His Spirit. Hmm? Amen. You get more in tune with the Word and with the Spirit, God will speak to you. Hmm? No? So uh, God don't speak to me. You're telling on yourself. Hmm? We see the prayer. We see the parson dispatch with the answer. And then we see the prophecy. In verses 24 through 27, we see the prophecy of the 70 weeks. And it's very distinctive when you study it out, 69 weeks and then one week by itself. Now, I'm not going to get in too deep in the prophecy because, again, I'm not a prophet. Uh, but I am going to give you two viewpoints on this prophecy, and then I'm going to get to the thought of the message tonight. Uh, the prophecy given to Daniel in viewpoint of the Jews is this. From the beginning of their captivity to when Israel gets to go back to Jerusalem and Jerusalem is restored, they look at the 70 weeks each week as a year. And if you look at it, based on the the prophecy of Jeremiah, they were in captivity 70 years. And Ezra and Nehemiah got to go back and they got to restore the walls of Jerusalem and then the temple was rebuilt and they were able to leave captivity and go back and stay in the nation. If you look at this, that is what uh, Daniel was asking for. He looked and saw the prophecy of Jeremiah and he begins to entreat the Lord... Uh, over when Jerusalem will get to go back, or when Jerusalem be restored, uh, and his people get to go back. Uh, and if you uh, uh, study all that out, uh, they were looking to go back to Jerusalem, and then they were looking for the Messiah to come and deliver them. That's what they, they thought this prophecy had everything to do. If you look at verse 24, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city, Jerusalem to finish the transgression. They were in captivity because they transgressed. They are now having to pay for their sins 70 years in captivity. Uh, uh, the whole crowd that denied God would die off before Israel would be uh, 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 out of bondage and once again a nation. Uh, then it goes to make an end of sins. Again, the end of their uh, transgression. Uh, and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring into everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision uh, and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. They're looking for Messiah to come when they get to Jerusalem. Can I say that every generation of Jews since then are still looking for the Messiah to come. The Messiah is going to come. Jesus is literally coming back to this earth. We call it His second coming. They deny His first coming. The other viewpoint on this prophecy by Bible scholars is that 
from the time that Israel leaves captivity to the time that Jesus comes, each week represents seven years. Sixty-nine uh, times seven gives you exactly the time Jesus comes to the earth. He's born of a virgin. He comes, he lives, uh, he bleeds, he dies, uh, he is buried, and then he ascends. And they said that uh, they, the way they look at it, uh, it culminates in his ascension in verse number 24 when it says, uh, and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. When Jesus ascended and sat down at the right hand of the Father, uh, all things were put under his feet. And they said that it culminates with that. It goes on to mention the, the, there's a space and then there's one week. They say the space is the time that we know as the fullness of times or the time we know as the grace age, the time of the Gentiles. They say the space is the church age. Uh, they say that time between the 69th week and the 70th week uh, is what the Jews was not looking for. When Jesus grafts in uh, a, a branch into the vine, the church is established, people are saved by the grace of God, and that is all the space. Uh, and the one week that is left over, the seven years for the one week, is the great tribulation period. And it goes on to mention... In verses 26 and 27, He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week He shall call sacrifice and oblation to cease. Uh, you, if you study out the great tribulation period, it's divided into two parts, uh, uh, 42 months, three and a half years. Uh, uh, the first three and a half years, uh, the one world government set up, the one world kingdom set up, the Antichrist has all the answers for everything. Uh, uh, there will be some form of religion set up that is uh, of God and by God because there will be a great number Number that will uh, uh, be saved that no man can number and according to Revelation chapter 7 there will also be 144,000 Jews uh, saved out of the great tribulation period uh, but he says in the midst of that sacrifice and oblation is cut off in the second three and a half years of the great tribulation period Israel is on the run she is the uh, the woman, the mother of the child uh, that is on the run, that is being hunted by the Antichrist, uh, trying to be destroyed. Uh, and we know at the Battle of Armageddon, when all nations are turned against Israel, that's when the Lord literally comes back. We come back with Him on white horses in Revelation 19, uh, and the Lord will put an end to all those fighting against Israel. And then He'll set up His kingdom, and He'll r rule and reign from the throne of David for a thousand years. It goes on to say... And the sacrifice and oblation cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, uh, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. In chapter number 12 of Daniel, he calls it the time of Jacob's trouble. And so, Bible scholars say this deals, the prophecy deals in that light. It really doesn't matter to me, because I'm not smart enough to figure either one of them out. What does matter to me is what is said in verse 25. I mean, if you go and read and they talk about all these months and how it all adds again, I, I tell you, I, I was reading some of that the other day and my brain was like scrambled eggs. I got tired of looking at it all. I'm thinking, Lord, I'm glad you gave these people that intellect. I don't have it. I don't really care. It doesn't affect me. But I'm interested in verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks, and threescore and two weeks. Here's what I'm interested in. And the street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublesome times. Troublous times. And I got to looking at that. And he's talking about restoring Jerusalem. He said that the streets will be built, the walls will be built, even in troublous times. And that's what I want to preach on for just a few minutes tonight, in troublous times. Friend, we live in troublous times. You look around this world, we live in troublous times. There are nations in this world that are locking up people, Great Britain to be one, for posting things on social media about what's happening in their nation. 
Do you know the nation of France has been given to Islam? And now Muslim and Islam is taking over Great Britain. Do you realize that Kate Middleton recently was out in public wearing one of them hoods that the, the women wear so she could honor Muslims in Great Britain? We're talking about the country where Spurgeon preached. We're talking about where great revivals broke out. But can I say Great Britain turned their back on God long before America did. And you look in America at what's going on. You look at uh, what is happening in our country. Our country that since 1972, I believe, has aborted I don't know how many innocent babies because uh, people chose in their life uh, to make decisions to sin and when they got caught up in their sin, to cover up their sin, uh, they aborted a life. Can I say? Any way, shape, or form, it's murder in the eyes of God. Can I say in our country, uh, adultery and fornication is normal. In our country, uh, uh, can I say that I can remember, and I know I'm getting old, but I can remember when divorce was a taboo thing. Now it's a normal thing. Can I say in our country... They're trying to push for same-sex marriage to be normal. In our country, they're pushing for transgenderism to be normal. They say it's okay for a man to compete against women. Can I say in my day, we wouldn't have wanted to compete against a, a, a woman in the women's sports. Uh, uh, it was no skill. It was, I mean, that would have defamed you as an individual to do that. By the way... They don't tell the stories uh, of these men that portray themselves to be transgender and going into women's bathrooms. Uh, how many women have been raped in those bathrooms? Uh, how many uh, uh, children have been abused in those bathrooms? They don't give you those statistics. Uh, uh, they also don't give you the statistic of... Uh, and, and the last one I read, it's nearing 70% uh, of those that actually mutilate their bodies uh, and go through surgeries to make them what God did not make them. Uh, nearly 70% of them are suicidal. Uh, 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 they think by changing themselves they'll be more accepted, uh, but they find out uh, that they're not any more accepted, but now they're even rejected more, uh, and they've gone against God, and even in their conscience, uh, uh, they can't live with themselves. Uh, they're pushing that to be normal in our society. Uh, in our society, uh, 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 America America that was built uh, upon freedom, uh, built upon life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, we have a party running for president uh, where one was installed who is pushing Marxism uh, and communism uh, and being heralded uh, all throughout America. Listen, uh, I don't think they're going to get in this time, uh, but neighbor, you watch. Uh, uh, before long, they'll be in and running things. Uh, uh, we live in a nation uh, uh, where we've sold out to every other nation. Uh, we're funding wars that there's no proof uh, that really happened. Uh, why we can't even feed people in our own country. Uh, listen, if you can fund two other wars uh, and you're taxing your people to death uh, to where they can't hardly afford groceries anymore, uh, it's meaning you're taxing your people way too much. Uh, America's spending money we don't have. Uh, America's headed for a fall. Uh, in our nation, and sin is accepted uh, sin is embraced uh, they'll let kids identify as cats and dogs in a school uh, but they won't let you pray in a school uh, they won't let you teach the bible in school uh, America has lost her mind uh, and friend uh, if you can't look around and see what's happening in America I don't know what I can do to help you uh, we live in troublous times I mean, we've had so many illegals brought here. And we have given so much money to illegals that it's bankrupting our country. And then to get to report in the last week that these people are so third world 
They're catching people's pets and eating them. Listen. It's not that I don't have compassion. But Haiti and the Dominican Republic share the same island. And in Haiti, in Dominican Republic has a wall and has security on the wall where they will not allow Haitians into their country. Do you realize Haiti has the highest number of disease of any nation in the world? AIDS is more rapid in Haiti than anywhere else. And every other disease is happening there. That nation is a nation uh, uh, filled with wickedness. Uh, there are churches there uh, uh, where they'll steal uh, their wells and water supplies, uh, uh, the people of that country. Uh, there are cartels and things that run that country. They don't have a government in that country. Uh, and it's wicked. Uh, and they just uh, are flying people from that nation to our nation in droves. Uh, we no longer will be a nation. We live in troublous times. And I say, you watch all that stuff, it'll depress you. It'll distress you. It will overwhelm you. Huh? You listen to politicians and they'll lie to your face. I don't know how much I've heard in the last couple of weeks that Congress, when they, when they convened the House... They have to attach this bill called Save the Act, which simply means that in order to vote in our country, you've got to be a citizen of our country. You've got to prove that you're a citizen with an, uh, an actual ID. They want to attach that to the next spending bill. There shouldn't be another spending bill ever. There ought to be a cut spending bill. And every Republican's talking about this, but I guarantee you already, it's already passed the spending bill and that SAVE Act won't be on it. Because every one of them, all they do is they're theatrical. They tell the people what the people want to hear and then they go in closed doors and do the opposite. They've been doing it for 40 years. Do you know it is in the Constitution, it is a law that... Congress balances the budget every year. And there's not been a balanced budget since 1974. They don't care what the law says. You ought to be able to see that and what's happened in some of these high-profile politicians the last few years. We live in troublous times. Can I say? You go on the job, you got to tiptoe around saying things because you can't offend anybody anymore or you'll be called a bully. These kids in school, they can't even stand up and announce they're a Christian without coming under fire. Can I say they have to put up with wicked things being taught from teachers that isn't reading, writing, and arithmetic. School systems are pushing agendas. Can I say everywhere you go, you're confronted with things that will trouble you. You ever look at some of the people working in some of the kitchens of the restaurants we eat at? That ought to trouble you. Can I say, these people that are coming illegally, and by the way, let me just say, there, there are three young men back there that had to come legally. Naren's had, had a job offer in May, had to wait for his papers to come through before he could start working. This crowd they're bringing in don't want to work. Government's just paying them. Huh? I'm not against folks coming legally. Amen. We have a system for that. Yes. But can I say that Christians told me a lot of these folks that are coming in from Africa, they're, they're fast-pacing giving them driver's license to drive these semis, and he said they're wrecking them all over the place. They're not equipped to drive them on our roads. They don't care. They're letting them drive. And I've seen some of them, man, they're all over the place. Get up there, and it's an African. And I'm not talking about an African-American. I'm talking about somebody from Africa. Doesn't speak English. Driving one of these semis. I'm just saying we live in troublesome times. But can I say in troublesome times, there are some things we can do.
First of all, can I say we can build? Look at verse 25. Look what it says. The end of that verse says, The streets shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times. Can I say, even in troublous times, even when everything is stacked against us, even when it looks like there is no hope, guess what? We can build. Hmm? They were able to build in troublesome, t troublous times. Uh, do you remember uh, Nehemiah's on the wall, Sanballat came against him, tried to stop him, uh, tried everything they could. Uh, I do want to remind you uh, that Jesus said, uh, Upon this rock I will build my church, uh, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, it doesn't matter what uh, everybody around us says. Uh, it doesn't matter what the authority says. Uh, what matters is what God says. Uh, and even even in troublesome times uh, and troublous times, uh, we can build. Uh, can I say uh, uh, most churches uh, are just trying to hold on to what they got. Uh, if that is the mentality, you're already losing uh, because you'll never hold on to what you got. People are going to pass away. People are going to get sick. Uh, hey, the church is to always replicate itself. Uh, where to take the gospel out uh, for folks to get born again uh, and bring them in. Uh, and disciple them uh, and send them out to win others. Uh, uh, the church uh, was never uh, meant to stand still. Uh, uh, the church was always commissioned to go uh, and to grow uh, and to glow. Uh, listen, if we can't build, uh, uh, we'll either sit still uh, and try, on to, uh, try to hold on to what we got uh, or we'll charge the gates of hell uh, and we'll take back what uh, the devil has taken from us uh, and we will... Uh, uh, be all that God would have us to be uh, we can build I don't have the answers for the next phase of our church but God does but I do know this I'm not sitting back sitting back resting on the laurels it's time to press on press on press on in troublous times we can build in troublous times we can bear down it means we can dig in we can be determined and we can make a stand. I don't care if they like it or not. I'm going to still make a stand. I don't care what laws they pass. I'm going to stand on this law. I don't care what's popular or unpopular. Or what. Listen, can I help you something? Let me, well, let me talk to the kids. Let me help you something. Y'all listening? There wasn't anybody more popular in school than I was. I've been popular. Two years after you get out of school, nobody remembers your name. Yeah. Popularity isn't everything it's cut up to be. You know what's better? Being what God will have you be. Uh, matter of fact, i got a cousin, Chris. I'll never forget, I've been out of school, I don't know, Chris is 10 years younger than me. So I'd been out of school for a while. And he come to me and he says, how can I get a girlfriend? I told him the same thing T. Higgins said the other day. I said, just tell him, tell him you're related to me. That's what I told him. He said, how can I get a girlfriend? Just tell him you're related to me. About two weeks later, he comes back. He, I said, you get a girlfriend? He said, no. I said, you tell him what I said? He said, yeah, and that didn't work. Listen, it's not about being popular. It's about being right. right. We need to be right. We just need to dig in. We, we, the, too many churches have given up too much ground. We saw that during COVID. Uh, it's time we just draw the line in the sand and say, this is it. Uh, we're going to make our mark right here. Uh, bring everything you got. Take every shot you got. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to stand on the things of God. We're going to bear down. Uh, we're not giving up, backing up, shutting up. Uh, it doesn't matter who's in the White House, who's in Frankfurt. Uh, doesn't matter uh, uh, what.
what they say down here in the local government. Uh, we're going to do what God says. Uh, hey, God's always honored His Word. Uh, he's always honored when you've made a stand. Uh, that don't mean you won't face persecution. Uh, but I will tell you this, every time in the book of Acts uh, when the church was persecuted, uh, she grew, and I'm not talking by a few, uh, she grew abound abundantly. Uh, God blessed abundantly. Uh, a friend, it's time we bear down. And you can do that in trouble sometimes. In troublous times, we can build, we can bear down. But you know what else we can do? We can bow, we can pray. Matter of fact, I highly recommend it. You'll never make a stand until you've been on your knees. And you'll never build until you've talked to the master builder. God help us to really have prayer lives. I'm talking about the kind that impacts communities and nations. The kind where our hearts melt within us when we don't see people getting saved every time we congregate. We can bow in troublous times. When I say this in trouble, troublous times, we can believe. We can have hope. I just read last week these verses, Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed, because His compassions fail not. Can I say we can believe the Lord? In troublous times, we can just trust Him. We can have hope. Uh, this world doesn't have any hope. Uh, that's why they keep moving the lines, why they keep breaking the law, why they keep doing all these wicked things. Uh, they're looking for a thrill. They're looking for some satisfaction that they do not have. Uh, we have it. His name is Jesus. Uh, we can have hope. Uh, hey, this is as close to hell as we're ever going to get. Uh, and one day soon, the trumpet's going to blow. Uh, we're going to be out of here. Uh, we're going to be on the other side with the Lord. Uh, and I guarantee you, yeah, Everything's wonderful there. We can have hope. Amen. We can believe. In troublous times, we can be a beacon. Can I say this? You know this. The light always shines the brightest in the darkest of times. What better time to be alive and what better time to be a light for sinners than today? What they're craving is to see something that's real. Do you know why people gravitate to Donald Trump? It's because he's willing to make a stand and he's compassionate about America. The average person just wants somebody who loves America like they do. Can you imagine how they'd gravitate to God if they'd see a people with some fire for God as some of these people are on fire for Trump? Hmm. Hmm. People will drive hundreds of miles to stand in line without even the hope of getting in to hear him talk. And we can't get people to drive two miles to come to church. Right. When we know, we'll get in. And we know we get to hear from heaven. Amen. And I say, in troublous times, we can be a beacon. First Peter chapter 3, and verse 14 says, But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. In the troublous times, they look around and they see a crowd that's got hope. They'll want to know where our source comes from. Hmm. But when we complain about price of groceries and the price of gas and we complain about everything like they're complaining about it why would they want what we got no different what they got we'll sit and complain around the break room table at lunch about how bad things are and then the last minute we'll say oh why don't you come to church with me why should they huh but if they're complaining and we say yeah but the Lord sure is good David said he never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. And I can say, God's been good to me. Amen. And you start saying stuff like that, they'll say, there's something different about that bird. At first they might mock you, but they'll watch you. I guarantee you, at the first, Nicodemus was one of the crowd that was mocking Jesus. But he just kept listening and kept watching. And there was something different. 
And then he came to him by night when the crowd wasn't around that was mocking. He says, I know you're of God. No man can do the works you do except to be of God. Jesus said, you must be born again. I believe Nicodemus got saved. Say, how do you know, how do you, why do you believe that, preacher? Because he was one of the ones with Joseph of Arimathea that put his life in jeopardy begging for the body of Jesus so he could give him a proper burial. In troublous times, we can be a beacon. And then I thought about this. In troublous times, we can bruise the devil. Romans 16, verse 19 says, For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. Friends of you that just come to church, you don't know, but I do, because I am privileged. The Lord's enlarged my coast. Our church is known throughout the world. Our little church is known throughout the world. There have been people that are here, and all they do is they go everywhere they go, and they brag about our church. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. Paul goes on to say this, I am glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. Verse 20 of Romans 16. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Can I say, in troublous times we can bruise Satan by doing the things that I've said. By having a prayer life, by making a stand, by pressing forward and building instead of backing up, by being a beacon, by having hope. Do you know if you've got hope, you can't be broken. Do you know in every situation where there's a prisoner of war, the first thing they try to do is break your hope. The second thing they try to do is indoctrinate the youth. So when they grow up, they won't have the hope that you have. But when they cannot break your hope, it frustrates them to no end. And friends, we have a blessed hope. It's time we enact it. Live by it. And in so doing, we'll bruise the head of Satan. I always like and want to read about us as Christians and the roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. I always likened it to the, you know, the children's story, the big bad wolf, three little pigs. Three little pigs were no match for that big bad wolf. And when they did it their way, they built a place of straw, a place of sticks. The wolf blew them down. They was easy prey. But when they got a solid foundation, they got that house of brick. That wolf huffed and he puffed, but he couldn't blow their house down. If we can ever get to where we need to be with God, old Slewfoot can huff and puff and huff and puff. But the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. I sure want to go out giving him a black eye rather than go out limped and defeated because all that I based everything on was I was looking at all the trouble and I didn't look to God. Friend, in troublous times, even in troublous times, our God prevails. You might be troubled tonight and I'm not trying to minimize your trouble but I got a God in heaven who's greater than anything you face. And by the way, if you're saved and you're facing something, it's because he allowed it to happen. Our reaction to it determines our relationship to him. Why don't you in your troublous times just turn to him and just build the streets, build the walls, let God be God in your life. And who cares what's going on in this world? In the end, we win. So just keep your eyes on the captain. That's all, Stan. Come get a song.
Maybe you need to come and talk to the Lord. Sure helped Daniel. Daniel saw things nobody else did because he talked to the Lord. Maybe you need to come and praise the Lord. Maybe you're facing something. Daniel was in captivity. His people were in captivity. They were slaves. And he was seeking the Lord. Maybe tonight you just want to come thank him that he's delivered you. Maybe you want to thank him you got some hope. I don't know. But tonight, God spoke to your heart. You come. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the hope we have in Jesus. Lord, I know this whole world is wicked and it's not going to get any better. But Lord, I'm glad, come what may, we have you. Lord, help us to be focused on being all we can be in Christ. Lord, help us to make the stands we need to make. Help us to build. Help us not be... To help us to be quick to bow help us to be a beacon in this dark world help us to believe increase our faith and then God certainly I pray you'd use us to be a black eye to the sorry no good devil yes. bless now these in the altar those that are praying in the pews yes. God just have your will and way in this invitation God will bless you for it in Jesus name Amen Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.